Hey Jake, I'm gonna borrow this guitar for a little while, all right? Sure, whatever. Just make sure you bring it back tonight, because I gotta finish that guitar kit building video. Oh yeah. Don't worry about it. I'll bring it back. Man, that guy's weird. Whatever. Jake, what are you doing? Uh, I'm making the music video for the guitar kit. <sighs> All right, enough joking around, let's build a guitar. I've wanted to build a guitar for a really long time now, but I was just never ready. So I finally decided to just bite the bullet and order a guitar kit. Sometimes it's okay to compromise if it means action. Plus, I figured this was a great way to practice some guitar building techniques before applying them to a guitar that I built from scratch. And honestly, I think I made the right choice. This was a heck of a learning process in and of itself. And even though I made a bunch of mistakes, I can't wait to build the next guitar. After sanding and cleaning the guitar body, I could start applying the dye. I ran into a few issues with this, but I made a whole video all about it, so be sure to check that out in the links down below. All right, now that I'm done staining, and it, this looks super good. I'm really impressed with how this turned out. I'm gonna take off all of the blue tape and then apply this uh, wood grain filler to the back. It's uh, got some really deep grain, grain pores, so we wanna fix that. I used some water-based grain filler to fill the mahogany wood pores. This will result in a much smoother finish at the end. I've never been that big into grain fillers because I typically like a more natural look and feel but this is a guitar, and it's supposed to be like glass. All right, it's been about 24 hours, so the dye is totally dry, and all the grain filler I put on the back, that is also totally dry, and all that's left to do is scrape the binding. Basically, the dye kind of dyed some of the binding here, so I'll have to scrape that off, and then it'll be ready for lacquer. Scraping the binding on a guitar is really easy and straightforward. I recommend using a sharp razor blade and a utility blade, and just to go slow and take your time. I then made some quick brackets to hold the guitar body and neck while I sprayed on the finish. Quick tip, whenever you spray lacquer, make sure to heat it up first with some hot water. It will lay out much smoother than when it's cold. I sprayed a few layers of clear lacquer on the body and neck. I wanted a nice even coat without any drips. All right, so I got the first coat of lacquer on and it's looking really nice. However, a little bit of problem with my grain filler. Let's see if that'll focus. You can see that patchiness and unevenness. I'm not really liking that. Uh, so what I've decided to do is this guitar would look really cool if the back was black. I'm gonna give everything a quick sand and change directions a little bit. Do a couple coats of black on the back of the guitar as well as the neck so it matches and then we'll clear coat it. Sometimes when you're working on a project, you need to pivot. And this was one of those times. Since the grain filler left a weird discoloration, I decided to paint the guitar black. This hurt because I hate painting nice wood, but I think it was the right choice. I used some cheap black spray lacquer that I already had and gave the guitar body and neck a couple of coats. Word of the wise, spend the extra time and tape off the front of the guitar. <laughs> I got lucky and I didn't accidentally paint the front of the guitar black, but it was really risky and stressful. So just take the extra time and do it right. Don't do what I did. I also sanded after the first few coats in an attempt to reduce the orange peel texture. It helped a little bit, but I don't think I'd waste my time on this extra step next time. Peeling off the tape was super satisfying. There were a few spots where the paint was able to get into the binding, but I just used my handy dandy razor to scrape the binding again, and it was good to go. I heated up my clear lacquer again and went back to spraying clear on the Les Paul body and neck. It's incredible how good this finish starts to look as the layers build up and how the dyed grain really starts to pop. In all, I used about a can and a half of spray lacquer for the finish. All right, so I've got the clear coat all applied. It's about a can and a half, 
total across the entire guitar and it's looking really nice. Now the only bummer is that it still has lots of orange peel texture. I was really hoping that the nicer clear coat would lay out a little nicer than the black because uh, the black lacquer was the cheapest stuff I could find just what was available. So what I'll do is I'll wait seven days for the lacquer to totally harden and then I'll use some really high grit sandpaper, wet sand it back a little bit, and then use some polishing compound and polish it up. And I think that is gonna give it that perfect factory finish look that I'm going for. I'll see you in seven days. All right, so it's been like 20 days or so, and this lacquer is real solid there. And I've decided that I'm gonna go ahead and wet sand this. There's still a little bit of orange peel from the lacquer finish. And well, I think this is generally pretty good and you don't need to do this next step. This is a whole experiment. So I wanna try going the extra mile and learning how to wet sand and polish a guitar. Wet sanding sucks. I used 1200 P paper with a little foam block and I just started working on the guitar one section at a time. I really think this step is absolutely worthwhile though and not really complicated. Just take your time, go slow, and I think you'll be really happy with the results. Before sanding the guitar neck, I applied some hard wax finish to the fretboard. One big issue with wet sanding is of course water soaking into the wood. So I was just hoping that this would ensure that I didn't ruin the fretboard. Speaking of using too much water, when wet sanding a guitar, I found you have to be really super careful about getting any water into any holes. What happens is when the water soaks into the wood, it expands the wood, which in turn will crack the lacquer finish. This happened at every single tuning machine hole. So it's not super obvious, but it's still a huge bummer. Since 1200 grit is far from a mirror finish, I used some abrasive car polish and a foam pad at the drill press to bring the shine out of the guitar. This was a really messy process, so if you have any tips on how I could do this smarter next time, let me know in the comments down below. All right, everyone, we are getting closer to finishing this guitar. I've already started some of the soldering. I'm not gonna do a lot of detail on that. It is way more difficult than it should be but uh, I think I got it figured out. So the next steps are to finish the soldering, get it installed in the guitar, and then we should almost be ready to play it. Let's go. If I'm being honest, I thought the electronics and soldering portion of this guitar build was gonna be the easiest. I was very wrong. I don't know why, but guitar wiring diagrams just don't work for my brain. Also, it never occurred to me that a semi-hollow guitar doesn't have an access panel. This means you have to wire everything ahead of time, thread it into the guitar and solder it in place, which is actually really tough. The small wires break really easily and it can be challenging getting the components right where they need to be. I think if I did it over again, I would recommend building a solid body guitar first. I think wiring a solid body guitar would help you understand exactly how all the components worked together as opposed to the mess that I made that I still just don't understand why it works. Okay, so I just remembered I didn't solder the pickups into the pots before I put the pots in, so I gotta take them back out and solder back together. And there you have it. I had all the components installed and then I realized I forgot the freaking pickups. Oh well, this is just part of the learning process. But once I got everything wired back together, I could finish bolting down the pickups and I started installing the rest of the hardware. Installing these press fit bolts for the bridge was kind of tough. I tried using a towel and a mallet, but I actually found that smashing the like button worked way better. So I highly suggest smashing the like button right away. It's actually really impressive how well smashing the like button works. Also, thank you for smashing that like button. Once that like button was smashed, I installed the tuners. This is actually when I noticed the finish had cracked from the water soaking into the holes. Again, if you wet sand, just make sure you don't get water into anywhere that isn't totally sealed with lacquer. All right, so I'm making a lot of progress on the guitar. I've got all the soldering done. Um, all the components are installed and I think it's pretty much good to go. The only thing I noticed was that the frame for this pickup is backwards. So. 
I gotta take that pickup back out and fix that. And then I'll get it all polished up with some polish. Get the strings on there and get it all tuned up and dialed in. And then I think we can start playing some guitar. Flipping around the pickup bracket wasn't too tough, but still annoying. Because at this point, I've probably taken apart the guitar 459 or so times. But again, this is a learning project. I finished up the guitar using some turtle wax. I figured if it was good enough for turtles and it was good enough for guitars. Then all that was left was to string it up, get it tuned, and then hang it on the wall because I don't really know how to play guitar all that well anyways. Overall, I'm really happy with how the guitar turned out. I actually have another kit waiting to be built, so if there's anything specific that you wanted to learn about or for me to feature in my next build, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. If you liked watching this moron build a guitar, you're definitely gonna like this next video I've queued up for you right down here. Also, special thanks to Sunsender for writing the theme song to this video. It's called Shinobi and it is freaking awesome. If you wanna check out any of their stuff, I'll have links in the description down below. All right, I'll see you in the next one.